such as this. Wireless security system, that's all. The great thing is, they're designed to go together. You simply wire it right in. Done. That's all there is to it. This will take the video feed and then transmit it out an antenna. This will then get transmitted to a receiver station, such as this, which is then hooked up to another video screen, such as these goggles, or a video screen such as this, just a little TV. Well, same when they, now, the only yeah, thing that you're really going to be looking at fucking, beyond just the camera is what video frequency do I want? Well, there are several different video frequencies out there, and uh -oh. the choices oh, they're changing it. They're aren't change it. always they're as change simple as you might think. We'll start with the most common video frequency, 5.8 gigahertz. 5.8 oh, gigahertz wow, is one of the most common video frequencies for FPVers. Why? Because you can use it with a 2.4 gigahertz radio. There's no problems. And the equipment is small, compact, it's cheap. Very, very small antennas. And they try now, to sell me this for 400 When going with right 5.8 gigahertz for video, circular polarization oh, is a must. Linear polarization will cause many problems due to multipath reflections, which I'll explain in a later video. The great thing again, small antennas. If you jump up to a lower frequency, your antennas start to get a little bit bigger like this. So 5.8, small, cheap, it works. The downsides, you must use circular polarization. And there's another problem, the Fresnel zone. If you fly behind an object, and your video transmitter can't see your receiver, guess what? Your video is going to break up. It's going to get weak or go out completely. You can't fly behind trees. You can't fly behind barns or houses on 5.8 gigahertz. I can't even fly a line of So let's say it. that's what you want to do. Well, going there are other jail. video frequencies to choose. Going to jail. So let's say you want to fly behind objects. So 5.8 gigahertz isn't for you. Well, we'll step one frequency down, one that many people are familiar with. 2.4 gigahertz. The antennas are getting a little bit larger now but they allow you to fly behind objects. You'll get a little bit of video breakup, but not nearly as bad as behind objects. You'll get a little bit of video breakup, but not nearly as bad as 5.8 gigahertz. There is a problem with 2.4 gigahertz. It's on the Wi-Fi band, which means if you're around a lot of Wi-Fi routers, inner city, probably best to pick another band. However, there's also 2.3 gigahertz, which is just a step down, which is outside of the Wi-Fi so you'll be able to fly no problem around Wi-Fi routers. There is one more problem though. Most of your radio systems are 2.4 gigahertz radio. Do not, and I repeat, do not attempt to fly a 2.4 gigahertz radio with 2.4 gigahertz video. Sure, there are people that claim they've, they've done it, and we have a name for those types of people. Lucky, very lucky. Please don't try it. This is stressing your equipment to the limit. If you're going to fly 2.4 gigahertz or 2.3 gigahertz video, please choose either 72 megahertz for control or 35 megahertz or 40 megahertz for the European guys or 433, you know, your oh, UHF oh, LRS. Say it like that. Let me say it like that again. Please choose either 72 megahertz for control or 35 megahertz or 40 megahertz for the European guys or 433, you know, whoa, your UHF 5 megahertz or 40 yeah, megahertz yeah, for the European guys or 433, you know, your UH 5 megahertz or 40 megahertz for the European guys, or 433, <laughs> or 35 megahertz or 40 megahertz for the European guys, or 433, you know, your UHF or LRS systems. But there's more to the choose from than just 5.8 and 2.4. There's also 1.2 gigahertz. Now the antennas are starting to get significantly larger like this big. The greatest thing about 1.2 gigahertz, there's nothing on it. Typically, this is the quietest band for noise and outside interference. It's strict. Uh -oh. It's basically 1.3 gigahertz is given to amateur radio operators. So this might be the cleanest video band for you. The other nice thing is the low frequency bends around objects great. So you'll be able to see through buildings and trees at a fair distance. The downsides are one, well, you're antennas start to get fairly large like this there's also one other problem that um, 2.4 gigahertz radio probably isn't a good idea why is that well it's what's called a harmonic the second harmonic 
of 1280 hits right in the 2.4 gigahertz band. So you might need a filter in order to fly 1280 oh, megahertz or 1256 with a 2.4 gigahertz radio. There's also one more problem. Your video will far exceed your ability to control your airplane. So That's just so funny, because you have good video saying, oh, doesn't mean you're running out of first. control distance. So if you're oh, flying God. 1280 Being megahertz and keeping it close, 2.4 gigahertz radio is okay so long as you use a filter. There's one last frequency you can choose, and that's 900 megahertz. 900 megahertz plays well with all radio systems, 2.4, 72, 35, even long range radio systems. There's, the only problems are one, the antennas are now very large, and there's also a problem with these, cell phones. You see, cell phones, the G3 band is 900 megahertz. So if you're near a cell tower, chances are it's gonna knock you out of commission. So if you're in an... Hi, I'm Alex Grieve, AKA IB Crazy. And this is how to be successful in FPV, part four, the antenna system. More than any other component, the antennas are going to make the greatest impact on your video piloting experience. So choose them wisely. What do you choose? Well, the third person you need to choose is Who else's voices have been recorded on my Alexa? Two types of polarization. Who else's Circular voices have been recorded on my Alexa? Linear polarization You're is what you most often hot. see in most You're systems around hot. the world. It's just a straight up and down whip, such as this. Very simple and very basic. There's a problem with linear polarization. A reflected signal will still enter the antenna. So when your receiver is listening for that signal, it might get the, get the echo that echoed off that tree or off this building behind you. So even though my airplane might be way out there listening to the signal, it might have a bounce signal that's slightly delayed off something behind me and still enters that, an, that linear antenna. If you use a directional oh, antenna, it takes care of part of that problem. However, you can use a different style of polarization, circular polarization. The great thing about circular polarization is the wave, instead of being running like this, it now runs as a spiral. The interesting thing about a spiral wave, when it hits an object, it reverses direction and comes back out. So in the case of an antenna generating that spiral, you've got this spiral system coming out. If it reflects off of something, I can't get into this circular polarized helical antenna. It'll only wind one direction. So reflected signals automatically get knocked out. So circular polarization will keep your video from mixing. If you have a problem with your video scrambling all over the place, that's probably multi-path interference and it might be time to change the circular polarization. So now we've gone over the difference between linear and circular polarization. What type of antennas do I use? Well, if you're going with circular, these are the original, the blue beams. Circular polarized transmitter antenna, circular polarized receiver antenna. There are many flavors out there. This is known as a clover leaf with three lobes, a skew planar wheel with four lobes, or the IB Crazy Mad Mushroom with five lobes. Well, what's the difference? Well, typically the clover leaf has been historically used as a transmit antenna, but the Mad Mushroom works fine as well. The skew planar wheel has been historically used as a receiver antenna. Does it work as a transmitter antenna? Of course it does. Does the cloverleaf work as a receiver antenna? Of course, it's just convention. But typically most people have had success with the cloverleaf and the skew wheel. The Mad Mushroom will be released in a few months, so keep an eye out for that one. It's an improvement on this little oh, yeah, guy here. My the cyclone and the rotor went so, together? What kind of range can you get at? Like well, it depends on your system. Sure but the nice no, the thing is, is most it. pilots do not fly behind themselves. Often. They typically set they up and there's their field out there. The so for that, you might want a directional antenna. Well, now it gets a little bit different. You're still using your omnidirectional antenna on your airplane, but now you want a little bit of directionality. You want your antenna to look out that way. Why? Well, if your antenna is listening behind you, it can't listen as well in front of you. This is where the concept of gain comes in. So the higher the gain, the more directional the antenna. So we'll start with a very, very low gain antenna that's directional, such as the helical antenna. That's low gain? This is a circularly polarized antenna. 
it is listening in about 145 degree beam. So anywhere between my two arms, it listens just as well or stronger than the Omni antenna. Does that mean I can't fly behind myself? Of course not. You can fly behind yourself, just don't go very far. The great thing about a, uh, about a directional antenna is not only does it allow you to fly further away, but your video clarity is going to be better when right out in front, and also gives you that added punch to punch through buildings, you know, and trees and other objects. This antenna, this is a 1.3 gigahertz helical, but let's say you go up to 5.8 gigahertz. Well, now the helical is nice and tiny, very small. So it's the, the same ones antenna. Promo ones the only difference is this is a higher frequency, so the antenna gets smaller. Well, let's say you want slightly higher gain. And well, there's a five-turn helical, that paid eighty dollars more turns. So let's say you want a little bit more range than the helical. Antenna antenna had. You steal it? Well, for that, there's the crosshair. The crosshair was developed as a joint effort well, between me justice. and Hugo of True RC Canada. We developed this specifically for FPV. Great axial ratio, which means it rotates a signal very well, and it has the ability to punch through all kinds of objects. Keep an eye out for this one. This one will come in different arrays with th two or even four stacked against each other wow. that'll be able to punch through mountains a mile away. Now again, if you're a beginner, don't try it. This antenna is more an advanced pilot's antenna. You know, you're not able to fly nearly as far behind this antenna as you would, say, a helical. Echo, what time is it? Can you fly behind it? Sure. It's Again, so not as far. What's the beam width of it? Beam width is about 120 degrees, so a little bit narrower. The helical's out here, the crosshair's in here. Again, that's where the beam is as strong, if not stronger, than your Omni antenna. Again, you can fly to the sides. Just don't go far. Well, that's circular polarization. What about linear? For linear polarization, there are three common antennas out there. The patch, the Yagi, and the Biquad. The patch, the 8 dBi patch, is a, the linear equivalent of this helical antenna. All it is, linearly polarized. Many people do great with a stock antenna and an 8 dBi patch. It works great. They go up to 14 dBi for much, much longer range. Again, 14 dBi, highly directional. If you're, if you're a beginner, you do not want high gain. Stick with something around seven, eight, you know, no more than 10, absolutely not. Another antenna is the Yagi. The Yagi's come in all different sizes, higher gains, and they can reach out there further. The problem with the Yagi's is they tend to have some issues with multipath interference. But if you're going for long range, Yagi's work great. And then of course, there's the Biquad. The Biquad antenna is great. There's no side lobes, but there's a little bit of a lobe here to the sides and a little bit to the rear, so you can fly behind it into the sides of it fairly well, but your beam out front is about 90 degrees, so about right here. It's linearly polarized, so your capability, so you wanna fly a linear antenna with it. So. Which antenna is right for you? How far can I go? Well, this is a results may vary hobby, and you might want to get used to that. So make sure that you know that we'll, uh, answer the question. what one person can do with a certain setup doesn't mean that you're going to do the same. You might do better than they will, or not as mu not as well. It all depends. Really, it's experimentation. Honestly, an omni antenna set works great for most people. So does a helical. So does a crosshair, even a biquad. It just depends on your mission. So are you, are you going for long range, or are you looking to keep it in close and just fly around yourself? Make this decision, choose it wisely. The great thing about the antenna, it's probably the cheapest part of the video system, and it's really easy to change really? it out for another the system. Amount. There's nothing to it. So the like, choice is up not. to That's you. Like $80 Me personally, for the fucking thing. I fly this helical sometimes. For the uh, sometimes I fly a crosshair.